And suddenly they said, that is his nature. So I'm not used to that. We are used to God is good all the time. So just for, for today, I would like you to say with me, when I say God is good, you're going to say, and that is his nature. God is good. That sounds different, right? <laughs> Let's do it one more time. God is good. Amen. He is a good. That is who he is. That is who he is. Inside out, that is him. That is God. He is good. That is him. There is no shadow of evil in God. God is good completely. Inside, outside. His thoughts towards you are good. His plans towards you are good. Everything about God is good. Do you believe that this morning? That everything about God is good. Do you believe that? If you do, let me hear you shout Amen. amen. We have so much lined up for today and uh, really so much lined up for today. But We are going to start off by uh, sharing some testimonies. I know the dance will be coming after the testimony. Let me see. Yes. We're going to, we're going to line up uh, sharing some testimony and uh, for what the Lord has done in some lives. I know many of you here have testimonies to share of the impact that God has made in your life. I know some of you have been coming in to this church for the past one year, some of you for the past one week, some of you for the past one hour, some of you have been here from the beginning, and we truly thank God for you. I know that God has done some awesome things in your life. So for the next few minutes, we're going to be sharing some testimonies. We're going to call on a few people here to share some testimony of what God has done in their life as a result of their being a part of this, of this great work that God has started in this, that God started in this valley. Amen. And after the testimonies, then I believe I'm going to be sharing with you the history of Spirit Temple Bible Church, how we got to where we are today, celebrating our very first year anniversary. Amen. Happy anniversary to everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll call on three families. We will give them five minutes. And uh, I know you have a lot to share. Many of you have a lot that will take more than five minutes. But see, if you take more than five minutes, that's okay. But when I grab the mic from you, hopefully that's okay too. <laughs> Amen. All right. So let us call on brother and uh, sister Johnson. Oh, no, oh, sorry. There are many Johnsons here. Jakes and Diane Johnson. <laughs> we'll let them to tell us what the Lord has done for them. When they started coming to Spirit Temple Bible Church, who invited you and how your life has been transformed as a result of you being a part of this ministry. Amen, church. Amen. God is good. Amen. Um, <laughs> yes, it's nature, right? Um, <laughs> my husband and I, we've been here to Spirit Temple for about six months. Um, and in the six months' time for me, um, God has really shown me some things. Um, it's so overwhelming because, you know, when God does something so awesome, you just get so caught up in, you don't know what to say. But um, Spirit Temple has changed my life a lot. It has... I have grown. I have grown enough to know that when you pray, I've known this, but I know it now. When you pray, things happen. Things really, really happen. Um, there has just been uh, some things that i just been going through in my life, myself, and I thank God for Pastor Duke and First Lady just coming to the Bible studies. If you come to the Bible studies, you learn so much. You learn how to fight those demons. You learn how to go into warfare, which I have a little story that I did go into warfare. In my house, um, my husband and I, we were going through 
some things financially, and I started praising God. My daughter and children left the house, and it was just me. And I said, okay, this is my time. And I started praying, but then God just said, you know, I accept your prayers, but you have to get rid of, there's a financial demon in your house. So I started praying and praying, and all of a sudden that turned into warfare. I became a total different person. It felt like I had my armor on, nothing can stop me, and I started casting out that financial demon. I went to my front door, opened my door, and told him, you got to go. You got to go. And Satan is a little tricky. You know, I have a back door. I said, no, no, I got you there, too. I opened the back door and told him to get out. So praise God through Pastor Duke and First Lady and with myself going through the Bible study, Pastor has taught, taught me that you have to just put on that armor and you got to go into battle and you have to fight those demons. And I thank God for that. And I thank God because I have also grown so much to know how to really be so connected to God. My prayer life is so different. It is so different. I remember also at Bible study, Pastor had said, you got to pray the right way. You gotta pray the right way. You just can't say, Lord, I need this, I want this. You know, you have to sometimes ask for God to put people in place for you. Put people in place. And when I heard that, I went home that night, got on my knees and said, oh Lord, forgive me. I just been praying all wrong, all wrong, forgive me. And that has changed. My prayer life has changed. I've I talk to God more humbly and different. It's more sincere. It's just me and him. And I've seen where he has really made my life so much better, so much better. I don't wanna let my husband Amen. talk because I can just go on and on. Have mercy. Happy wife, happy life. And I thank God for that. He's an awesome God. But, you know, I, I like to thank Pat and First Lady because, excuse me. He's an awesome guy. They're an awesome couple. They follow the Lord. And like I told him, you follow him, I'll follow you. And I thank this pastor because he doesn't look at your scholarship. He looks at your availability. Are you available? And I just let you know that as a family, we love you. Thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of a wonderful church, a wonderful body. We love you guys. That's all we have. That's all we get is love. Thank you. Praise you. God bless you. We bless the Lord. Let's give them a hand of applause. Amen. 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 For what the Lord has done. Mr. and Mrs. Russell. They are looking so beautiful this morning. Tell us, I know this is a long, it's a long story, but we thank God. We thank God. Amen. Good morning. Um, my name is Talisha Russell, and um, how God has changed my life, he truly guided me to this church through my parents. And... Um, at this time in my life, since about the sixth grade, I was feeling like I was in a dark hole and I um, just never could come out of it. No matter what I did, I just couldn't. And um, so I started coming to church the first time me and Saray actually were like, we're going to church, that's it. And um, it changed my life. I just said, you know what? If I don't, I had a problem with committing to anything. So I was like, if I don't do anything else, I'm coming to church every Sunday. And then dad was like, well, we're going to Bible study on Wednesday. You want to come? So I said, okay. Then we started going every Wednesday, every Sunday, every Wednesday. I was like, I can't, if I don't do anything else all week, I'm going to be here. And I'm going to be here on Wednesday for the first time. Even the first time I was going through so much. And 
I just, when I was here, it was just like for these hours, it was done. And then things just started happening in my life. And then I started just feeling better. And so I took it to my friends, like, you guys got to come. You got to come. But I was going about it the wrong way. I was like, you got to come or you're going to hell. That's it. And so I had to, so God, well, coming to Bible studies and learning, not just being preached at, like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing it. It was more of a loving approach that was like, we love you. You know, this is how you read the Bible. This is how you pray. This is how you take what you're learning here and use it. And that's how I learned how to bring my friends. And I knew that it was like, it felt so good to me. And we were all hanging out together. So we were all going through the same stuff. So God really showed me, you know, this is how you talk to them. This is how you pull them in with love, just like you were pulled in with love. And in this year, I can say I've been committed to my church. I've been committed to my family. I've been committed to my pastor, my first lady. I've never felt so good about my life. Everything is not perfect in my life. But let me tell you, it doesn't even matter. I've had another level of relationship with God. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit like I never imagined in my life. But I just want to say really quick, and then I'm finished, um, something about what um, Aunt Didi was saying about seeing your prayers answered. Let me tell you, I have been on my knees in front of the Lord for my friends. So when I come every Sunday and when I come on Wednesday and I see them here, it just, it means so much to my heart. And I just thank God every day, you know, and I just really want to thank pastor and first lady for hanging in there and starting his church and, you know, never giving up on me and my parents for, you know, just being there for me because I know it's very hard. I'm a kind of a difficult person sometimes. It used to be, used to be. But I just want to say, um, if you're not a member, become a member. There is no church like that. I've been to other churches. There's no church like this. They love you. All these members. I can call Aunt Didi if I need to. I can call Brother Ron and Sister Pat. I can call anybody. I can always come in if they can see it on me. If I come to women's meeting, I wasn't even feeling it one day. They're like, something's wrong with you. I didn't even tell anybody. They just knew it, and they love you. It's not like, it's love. And that's all. And I have a wonderful husband now from somebody that had commitment. <laughs> so I just want to thank God. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Alquan Russell. Um, I started coming to this church around last November, actually. I'm, I'm from Florida. I lived here as a kid, but I lived in Florida for about 15 years of my life. And I say for the last three to five months of my living in Florida, I was like real depressed and something was wrong. Now, mind you, in Florida, I was not in church at all. I grew up in the church, but in Florida, I was not in church at all. I wasn't praying. I wasn't doing that. I was just somewhere else. But, um, and for the last three months, I was getting real depressed, and, and, and my father was trying to get me to move back up here. He was like, you know what? Move up here. We got the house in New Jersey. My grandmother passed away. She left us the home. You can come up here, start over. I just kept saying no, and I kept saying no, and I kept saying no. And then finally, like that last month, I said, you know what? Okay pick everything up, I'm going to move. Now, in the midst of that, I was speaking to Talisha, who we were childhood friends. She was a friend of my sister when we were young. Um, and I was speaking to her, and she had actually visited Florida. And at this time last year, we were not here. And I mean, not just in this church, but where our lives were at. We were not here. Big time, we were not here. And, and I started seeing her on, on Facebook one day talking about oh, here's my phone number, I'll pick you up for church. And I was just so like, I was like, wait a minute, I didn't even really believe it, first of all. I was like, yeah, right, I just seen you, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're crazy, all this stuff. And, but it intrigued me, because I was like, something is different, so we started speaking. And I, I moved up here in November. The church got here in September. I had no idea about this church, mind you. And I get up here, and I'm in New Jersey, and I come up one weekend, and I'm visiting my mom, who lives in Whitehall. And I called Talisha, and she comes and meets me. And we're talking, and, and we're talking. 
And she's like, you know what? You really need to come to this church. My whole life is different. I'm serving God now, and this is and that. I'm like, okay. I don't. I was like, and my my exact words were, I love God, but I don't like church. I was like, I don't want to go. And she's like, well, you really should come. I'm telling you, it's different. My pastor is way different than what you're used to. And she was saying that. And I was like, okay. She's like, I dropped the church van, so you let me pick you up. I'm like, okay, I have no choice. A snowstorm comes, so I'm stuck in Pennsylvania anyway. So I had no choice but to go. A snowstorm just comes out of nowhere. My mom's not driving back to New Jersey in the snow. If you know my mom, you know she's not driving in snow. So I'm stuck out here. So I go to church. And the first day I came to the church back when we were in the hotel, um, for the first time, and I've been to church all my life as a child, for the first time I felt the real tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. Like I see people cry and I see people shout and I, and I honestly, I never really believed that part of God because I didn't know about it. I didn't know about what the Holy Spirit was there for and what he could do for you and how to tap into his presence. Nothing to that, I didn't know. And I got there and I felt it. And I knew something was instantly different. And the pastor came over to me and I was, and I was new and I came up for prayer for the first time. And I said, I was looking for a new job. And pastor comes up and says, before I even say anything to him, he's like, I see a new job coming to you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. So I love the church for the first time. And then I end up, another snowstorm comes. Another snowstorm comes, sticks me out here again. And she's like, you should come to the pastor's house for Bible study. I'm like, is that his house? Hmm, that's different. Most pastors are not, you come to their house. I thought that was a good thing. So I go to his house. Bible study was like no other, on fire, great. I learned a lot that day. And then at the end of the Bible study, the pastor here, and I thank you, pastor, because I thank you so much because how it just played out, God is too good. I was sitting there and he stopped and he looked for a second, he closed his eyes and he just got real excited. And he said, I had something to share with you. I have something to share with you. I need to take you at the lunch. I need to take you somewhere. I'm like, okay. So I gave him my phone number. He calls me the next day. He comes and picks me up and we go have lunch at a Chinese buffet it was. We went and he's talking to me and we we're talking about things. And he's telling me about things about my life that I didn't even tell him yet. I was telling him what I was, you know, he knew all, he knew all this stuff already. And he told me, he said, God told him that I was going to come up here to be in some sort of ministry. And I laughed at him. I did. I was like, I don't think you know me, Pastor. I was like, I, I drink, I smoke, I do all this stuff. I was like, I don't, I don't think so, Pastor. He was like, yeah, it's okay to feel like that. But if you meet another true man of God, they will tell you the same thing. That's what he told me. He said, just pray on it. Don't worry about it. And I kept going. So mind you, for that next three weeks, I say, straight, almost a month, I was at church, Bible study, church, Bible study with her. I was, I, was, I was rotating three outfits. I was washing outfits over and over again. I'm serious. I was, I was here, and, and, and then and I kept coming to church, and so many things were revealed to me, and so many things started happening where what pastor was saying about me being a part of some sort of ministry started coming true because it was just happening. It was happening. It was happening. And God was basically just showing me, like, road signs, like, hey, this is what you're supposed to be. This is what you're supposed to do. And I realized the reason why I was saying no the whole time my father was telling me to come here is because the church wasn't here yet. It wasn't here yet. I got here two months after this church was here, and one month after she changed her life, she was my entrance point to get to the church. So when they said, sometimes you need to pray for God to put things and people in your life, sometimes he'll do it without you praying for it. But you really need to pray for that because it's true. Because he put someone into my life to give me the entrance door. And, and now I'm here. I'm going to be in parts of ministry. I'm going to be leading the youth. I, 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 pastor has me leading prayers on Friday. I, I, I pray and, and, and I'm just striving to get a stronger connection with God every day. I have a wife now. We are married. I mean, it is just amazing how my life changed and so quickly. I didn't even, my idea was to come up here because I make music. It was to come up here, make music, save money, do my music career. Church wasn't in the equation. And somehow I got here and my family, all my family is now in this church. When I first got here, when I first came here, it was just, I came here with her. And people were seeing me on Facebook talk about church and everything, and I was coming with my family. They had no idea none of them were here. I told Quanisha and her husband, Sawa, first. They came. They knew what was going on. They said it was the real deal. They felt the Holy Spirit. My Aunt Diane and my Uncle Jake came. My mother came. They all came, and now they're all here. They're all a part of the church. They're all a part of the ministry. They're all laborers. They're not just coming. So God is good. You never know what God has for you. You never know when he's going to change it. And I thank my pastor, my first lady, so much because he because the Holy Spirit is real and he's seen stuff in me that I would never know. And I thank you and I'll follow you, Pastor, wherever you want us to go. Whatever you need us to do, we will do it because I know that you are a true man of God. And I thank you for being in our lives. And thank y'all. Thank you, guys.
bless you. God bless you. Amen. God is awesome. God is in the business of changing lives. Amen. Now we're going to hear from Mr. and Mrs. Dosumu. <laughs> Amen. Now, he is a historian. But thank God for his wife, who is not. Glory to God. I'm not going to try to tell everything because so much has happened since we've started coming. But just for those who don't know us, we are the parents of Talisha. And, it's, and just how freshly new this marriage is, when Pastor called for Mr. and Mrs. Russell, I started looking around like, who is that? <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. So for me, I would, I mean, I have, there's so many testimonies, but what I think where God has really moved in my life. I, I've led a very blessed life. I've walked in God's favor since birth. I mean, I just, I have. I, I grew up, you know, I, I was in church before birth. But something happened to me when I started going to Bible study. Something happened. Something ignited in my life that had never happened before. And it changed me. I have a relationship with God. Now, you know, my mother's favorite scripture was all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I learned that before kindergarten. I could probably say that before the ABCs. I don't know. But now I know what it means. I learned how to recite it. Because in my family, when we went to dinner with pastor, all of the kids said a Bible verse at the table. So I knew that you're supposed to memorize Bible verses, but now I know what it means. I know how the Holy Spirit takes a hold of your life. My testimony is a testimony of a healed family. It's a testimony of family healing. When I think of where my children were before we got connected to this church, I got some good children. And they've always been good children. But I tell you, they were some hard-headed good children. <laughs> and the Lord has just turned our lives around just so much. And, you know, when, when Talisha has shared her um, testimony, and, and, I mean, there were times when I wanted to take that child and choke the life out of her. And now I love to be in her presence. I love to, you know, just even talk to her. She's just, she's a different person. My Ebony, the same thing. I mean, Ebony is a, a student, a full-time college student. Hallelujah. Oh, that's right. She dropped the class. She's almost full-time. Almost full-time. But she's in, I mean, God has just turned our lives around. It is so amazing when I look at what he's done. For me, for my children, for my husband, and it's just been the, the way that he's moved in my life. I, like I said, I've, you know, I've led a very blessed life, but I've never felt the presence of the Holy Spirit walking me through, telling me what decisions to make at work, telling me what decisions to make with my family, telling me what to say and what to not say. And you can hear him loud and clear. He just gave me a message about my job on Friday, loud and clear. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, down to being able to, you lose something, you get on your knees. We, we had car, a car key issue, getting on your knees and praying. And before you know it, you got the car keys. He sent us right to it, right? Let me tell you, Pastor, First Lady, you have been just a blessing to us. Uh, you know, we, we've gone to a lot of churches. And I'm the type of person, because I grew up in church, my family was in the church. My church was my family. And so I always have wanted to feel connected. And I have not felt that in a very long time. You know, this church is my family. This church is my family. My brothers and sisters are here. I am not alone. Is, you know, God is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. 
and I have brothers and sisters right here, and it's a blessing. Good morning, church. <clears throat> uh, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> but I, I agree wholeheartedly with what my wife said. <clears throat> but there is one thing that um, came to light for me since my association with this church. And that is spiritual learning is a continuum. You continue to learn. Where you taught, you know everything. You realize that you don't know nothing. <laughs> um, I pray for you all the time and the first lady for the role you played in my life. I've known pastor for <laughs> Almost uh, three years. I didn't even know he's a pastor. <laughs> we belong to the same club. And he never talked about God. Until one day we were out for a picnic. And he came and he handed leaflet. So, as usual, as he said yesterday that I will be the last person one would expect to be in church. <laughs> That's why the fight that. I grew up in church. I spent all my life in church, right from kid. But I'm kind of uh, that kind of Christian. <laughs> so, before I met Pastor, you know, I'm just a regular church goer, go every Sunday, do this. I was tired of church. You know, I was tired of playing church. And, um, and I was at a place in my life at that time, I was spiritually down, depressed. And when pastor spoke to me that day, I was just making fun. I said, oh, you're going to start a church? You want me to come? And I told him, I said, if I come, if you don't make me a treasurer, I won't come again. <laughs> and he said, just come come. So, my wife was not there. She wasn't there and um, she came to the picnic later and I gave her the paper. So, it was the following Wednesday, the Bible study. The first one, I think I was out of time. I came back. I said, oh, my wife said, oh, what about this thing? Let's go to this. I said, oh, forget about that. I'm not going. So, so the second week, I came back. My wife called me and said, hey, come back. Come home. So I went home. When I got home, she said, now we are going to Bible study. I said, Bible study? I didn't plan it. So I, he said, get up, get up, get up, get up. So I just, you know, I said, let me change my clothes. I said, you are okay like this. Come on, let's go. <laughs> so we went, and that was the beginning of my spiritual transformation. And... Let me tell you, at that Bible study, I've been to Bible studies many times, but you see, just like uh, Sister Diane and uh, Aquan talked about the presence of Holy Spirit, you know, you could feel it. It was just as if to say, you know, something very heavy was lifted up my head. And I was... In fact, when the, when the Bible study was over, I was clamoring for more. I said, this is so emancipating. You know, it was just so... And when we were going home that day, I told my wife, I said, you know what? Something happened there. For the first time in about six months... I've never been to church in six months. For the first time after that, I got home. For the first day, I was able to sleep soundly. I was able to dream. Then, and I started thinking about it. started thinking about it. The following Wednesday, I could not wait to get there. <laughs> and that's how we started. And since then, even the idea of church never even came up until when she started praying about church. 
And um, I, I just want to thank God for what God has done in my life. For me, I had been in spiritual oblivion. And God resuscitated me. And God, through this man of God, has healed my family. Has blessed my business. God, in a supernatural way, has continued through Holy Spirit minister to me. I can now say I am now trading towards spiritual maturity. I thank God for Pastor Ezra Duke, First Lady. God puts you in my life for a reason. And I will never abuse that privilege because uh, when you pray, just don't pray for yourself alone. You have to pray for the man of God because they face a lot of hurdles, obstacles. And uh, I saw it for the first time in my life in this church. It was during Bible studies when demons were cast out of people. I was scared like hell. I was so scared. Because <laughs> I have never seen it before and I've been in church all my life. So when you see things, you, you just have to acknowledge it. We are the power of God reside. Where things happen in your eyes like this, you see it. So, once you see that God manifested its power, its awesomeness of its power in our presence, that even, you know, increased my faith and belief in God. Because that God can walk wonders through his anointed. And that was what happened that day. And I will never forget. But it was a very traumatic experience for me. Because I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep for almost about three days. It's a true story. It happened in our church. I've never seen it before. Deliverance. Real deliverance. So, may God continue to strengthen you and increase your power. And may his anointing never depart from you. Thank you, my church family. You are, my, you are all my family. I love all of you. This is a wonderful church. I have never been in a church like this. And you are all appreciated. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. What a wonderful uh, testimonies of changed lives of what the Lord has done in all these lives. I know that many of you have testimonies to share. I, I wish you could let all of you share your testimonies. They will probably will not be out of here until 3 p.m. And some of you want to go home and have dinner. Uh, I know after there's lunch today, so don't run away after church. Just stay back, there's lunch. But I called the first lady because I want to give a little bit brief history of how the church started. We spoke a little bit about yesterday i know many of you were not here yesterday so we're going to talk about it again today the history of spirit temple bible church amen we moved down to allen town uh not because honestly uh when when i moved down here when the family moved down here it was initially to start a business because i am a businessman I have been involved in properties, uh, nursing homes. I have had nursing homes and uh, apartment buildings. So I, that's what I did, plus my profession. So I did a lot. You know, I have over 100 apartments back then in New York, over two assisted living homes in New York. So I've heavily invested in, in the financial world. So I came to Allentown with my mind. You know, I'm coming here to duplicate what I did in York, Pennsylvania. So I said, no, but let me settle down, get the family established, get them a house to stay, so we build a house. Everybody can be comfortable, then I can venture out and 
start doing all kind of business that you know, I wanted to do. I've made inquiry about this town. I've made my own research. I've talked to different people. I know how to penetrate into the business world in Allentown. But still, God was dealing with my heart. You know, uh, just dealing with my heart so, so much, you know, about that direction. And it came, uh, this was going on for struggles in my heart. And God telling me, no, I want you to start a church here in Allentown. We had started one in York, Pennsylvania. We started a church in Allentown. That's why I brought you here. And I struggled with that for months and months. And I would say, God, all right, let me just go to church. So we went to church. We just went, sat down always in the back of that church. Just to make us feel that we went to church. We just sat back there. Once church is over, we are out of the door. So it made me feel at least I'm still going to church. But God said, you know what? You need to start. The work I've called you, I've not called you to Allentown, Lehigh Valley, to start a business. I've sent you here to start a church. And i like, oh my goodness, I loved the business world. I've been involved in that. I have, by the grace of God, made a lot of uh, money in doing that. But then what happened was that in the month of May, in the month of May, we've been praying really to really seek the face of God. And I heard God clearly more than before telling me around June that you need to start the Bible studies. And I was just, you know, when God talks to me, I know when God is talking. I was sobbing continuously on the bed. It was, I was laying down. It was a Saturday morning. I was crying. Oh my God, why do, why should I have to do this? Because I know it, I know it takes a lot of time. I know if I put in, I know me, when I start anything, I put all me into it. I don't put one leg here and one leg here. I'm right in. And so I knew what was going to do uh, uh, for us as a family. Because when we first came in here, I asked the children and the family, we want us to, we are just trying to use them as an excuse. I said, I want to start a church. What do you think? Oh, daddy, no, not now, not yet. I said, praise God. The children said, not yet, not now. So, <laughs> so that gets me because they were being churched every day. Church, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that was our life, you know. And I knew they were more or less, you would say, churched out. The kids were because all night prayers, they would, we were out a little bed in the office where they would sleep when we are praying at church in New York. So they went through a lot. So when we came here, daddy, not yet. Please give us a little break. Let us. So, so that happened for a while. But that June, I told first lady, you know what? This is it. I really have to do this now. And then she said, you know what? I'm in with you 100%. Let's go ahead and do what the Lord has, 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 has spoken to you. So that was the first breakthrough. Amen? That's why I thank God for, 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 for a woman of God that is not in too interested in the material things of this world, you know, but also interested in the things of God. Amen? So what happened was that we then said, you know what, let me make some flyers. I belong to the Nigerian association that Brother Wale belonged to. So I, I made a flyer, and the flyer just said Bible studies. It was, I believe it was for Wednesday, I believe. Whether it was Wednesday. Bible study on Wednesday. So very first time I stood, I asked them, can I announce the Bible study? So I stood on a chair and I said, everybody pay attention. Usually I don't talk much, usually quiet. Nobody knew I was even a pastor there. I just went there, you know, just to belong to the association. So I said to them, I, we want to invite you for Bible studies. And it seemed like nobody paid attention to me. But at least I kept on talking what I was saying. I believe somebody said, quiet, Duke is talking. So everybody just quiet, and I spoke what I have to speak. And Brother Wale now said, oh, yeah, if you make me the treasurer, I would come. Then, I, then somebody else again, who was a Muslim, said, if you make me the financial director, I'll be part of it. I said, that's fine. You can all come for the Bible study. So the Bible study started in June. And uh, it was, when it started, our thought at that time was to have Bible studies in the house for at least two years. You know, at least two years just to make me think that I've answered the call of God at least just to just have Bible studies. I never knew 
that God was going to turn it into something very quickly like that. So in the month of June, Bible study started. The very first one, I believe, uh, Mommy wasn't here then, right? She, 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 was, she wasn't here then. So I uh, had the very first uh, Bible studies with some neighbors in the house. Then the second Bible study, Brother Wale and his wife, I believe, came and the others were, uh, were also in the house. Mind you, in that Bible studies, uh, I never used the word church because I knew most people that came there went to other churches. I didn't want to give the impression that we had a church. I actually went to just a Bible study at least for two years to make me feel that at least I've listened to God to start something. But really, I was still to a bit struggling. And then the second week of Bible, the topic of Bible studies, as we were praying, I asked Sister Melanie to close us in prayer. And uh, suddenly, as she was praying, and she said, she, she made a statement like this, Father, we thank you so much for this church that is in this started. I thought, oh my goodness, I never said church. I didn't say it's church here. She, I said, oh my God. So, what you said, this church. So, since when, when that was pronounced, I felt like, you know what? I better just do this thing right. Somebody who has just come here is praying and saying thank you God for the church. So anyway, so we started calling it a church, right? The next Bible study, that was it, was a church. We started going out looking for a place to have the church because we figured the house was getting packed. People were coming, neighbors were coming in, and the house was getting small. We have to move it down to our, our lower level that had more space. We moved there, and it was still getting very tight, and then we start looking for a place. So we got a place at uh, the comfort suite. So we got the comfort suite uh, and it started the very first service in September 22nd, 2013. Amen? See what the Lord has done in one year. Look at someone, tell them, see what the Lord has done. So then we started the first Sunday service, September 23rd. 22nd 2013 and we began to grow in that place at first we had one room that sat about i believe 50 people then we started growing we had to take two rooms and eventually took all the rooms in the hotel because the children's church everybody the place was really getting very busy people coming in from from Reading and Philadelphia and uh, Quaker Town, Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton. So the place was really getting packed. And then we needed, we realized that we needed to move out of that place. And there was a pressure for us to move out of that place when the hotel told us that come June, that we need to find a place because June is the busiest month, busiest season of the year. So we said, my God, June. And this was, I believe, around March or so. So there was real tension. We were praying. But, you know, I, but I just believed that, you know what, God is going to certainly do something. I didn't want to move back to the house again. You know, so we begin to pray. I mean, if you have never prayed before, this church prayed. <clears throat> this church went on prayer for God to provide us a I mean, we prayed, I mean, and we prayed, and we prayed every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday, every right, every Friday. Cause, yeah, you're right, because we used to pray on the telephone. Yeah, that's true. When we call it on Friday, we pray on the phone. People calling from different parts of, uh, of, the, of the area, from Quaker Town and from... <laughs> Amen. So we really prayed. And God, and God supernaturally gave us this place June 1st. Amen? So by June 1st, we moved into this building. And God has been increasing us, you know, miraculously. Great things have been happening in this church. What God has been doing in people's lives and lives have been changing. You know, initially when we started September 22nd, uh, Sister Tu was here at the time, very, uh, very close sister to me. She has been a blessing in our life, in our family. She came from York with the other church members from York, and they came to Allentown for the opening of the church in Allentown. And uh, 
the name of the church was El Shaddai Christian Center, the same name of the church we had in York. And uh, suddenly, as I was preaching a service one Sunday, even though I had been thinking all along about having a new name for the church, but personally, I don't move until I hear from the Holy, Holy, Holy Ghost. I really don't. I have learned big time. Don't take a step until he tells you. So I didn't want to just have a name because it sounded nice, because it sounded good. So I've been praying for a name of this church to change, but I really never come up with anything in my spirit. And suddenly as I was preaching the message that particular Sunday morning, and I just made a statement that the name of this church is about to change. Little did I know that God, when I make that statement, spoke to a brother, that's what it was, Brother Wale at that time, spoke to him and gave him a name right there. And the Brother Wale told me after service, Pastor, you won't believe it. The moment you said the name of the church is about to change, the Lord gave me a spirit temple. And uh, when he told me, it just, my spirit just resonated. Wow, that's it. Spirit temple, Bible church. That's what we're all about. All about, you know, the spirit of the almighty God, the Holy Spirit, the temple of the Holy Ghost. And because we declare this year as a year of the spirit, the year of the Holy Spirit. And when he said spirit temple, I said, wow, that is it. And immediately we begin to went on and the name of the church changed and the uh, and now we are known as Spirit Temple Bible Church. Amen? Give a hand of applause to the Lord. If you notice, you see, this is a place where the presence of God is continually manifested. It's a place where God's Spirit moves, a place where God's Spirit dwells, and a place where God's Spirit changes lives. Amen? The Spirit of God is able to change our lives. So we really depend a lot on the Spirit of God. We don't do things from our own intellect, our head, our mind. No, we don't, we don't function like that. It's all by the Spirit of God. And because we honor the Spirit of God, He moves mightily. Amen? And even today, He's going to move in your life. He's going to move in our lives. He's going to do some awesome things in you. It's going to take care of certain situations that has been plaguing you. And I believe it's going to move mightily in your life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So we truly thank God. So that is a very brief history. But like what I said yesterday, uh, the rest of the story is yet to be written. Because the best is yet to come. Give the Lord a hand of applause. We are going to be calling on the dance team as they get ready to, to uh, present the dance. And after that, we have the, ch the children uh, also presenting the shackles. And then we'll pray for the uh, call of service of, of the leaders. Amen. As they are preparing for the dance, I, I realize uh, that we don't have our, uh, our numbers here. Uh, we usually, out of transparency, because this is a church of transparency, we like to be transparent in everything that we are doing in Spirit Temple Bible Church. Um, last week attendance, last week Sunday, I don't is, does the bulletin have numbers in them? Okay, make sure. Uh, last week, attendance was 82, I believe. 82. 82. And the offering last week was 3,217, I believe. I believe. I believe. So, uh, so I need to share that because we typed this bulletin prior for the anniversary. We always include it in the bulletin. So I want us to just to tell you verbally how the Lord is blessing us and what the God and blessing us because of you, you know, as He blesses you, the church is being blessed. Amen. Amen. Is the dancers ready? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, saints. Um, I'm honored to welcome everybody this morning. And we're just so thankful to God for this day that he has made for us to rejoice in it. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Um.
right. <laughs> so um, we're going to be doing a skit, and um, I'm going to be playing the pastor, and Quenisha is going to be playing the woman in distress. <laughs> so we just hope you enjoy it. The song that we're going to be um, doing the skit to is called Is Your All on the Altar by LaShawn Pace. So I hope you enjoy yourselves.
Wow, 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 wow. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Leave it in the altar. Wow. Put it in his hands. Amen? amen. Let's just keep on going here with, this, with the service as we call on the children to have the children presentation. Amen, amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Didn't you enjoy that? Wow. We bless the Lord for those kids and we thank God for the for A Giro for teaching them. We truly thank God. Let's give them one more hand of applause. Yeah, we have a lot to do today. So please just hang in here with us. Let us really, this is the anniversary service. Amen? So uh, we are so glad to have everyone here today. For those of you that have come for the very first time, we are so glad that you came. We are glad you came because you are the very reason why we are here, honestly. Because we're here for people like you and you who the Lord will touch their heart to come in here. Just like uh, uh, Sister Lonnie would say sometimes, there are numerous churches that you could have gone to, but the Lord impressed upon your heart to come to worship with us today, especially celebrating our very first year anniversary. Hallelujah. It's obviously, like you can tell, give, give a lot of applause. Hey, God bless you, brother, back there. I know. <laughs> it's obvious that, as you can tell, that we have been blessed by the Lord. God has really blessed us in 12 months. Amen. Look at what the Lord has done. Amen. Yes, with all these faces and people like you that God has brought together to form a community of believers that love the Lord, love the Spirit of God, who, this, who Jesus Christ asked the Father to send to be with us. I will just thank God. So we thank you all for coming in. And this is, what, this is what I'm going to do. Usually, we would, uh, would tell the first-time visitors to stand up as we recognize them. But today will be a little bit different because I know we have a few first-timers here today. And I do believe that that what we're going to be doing right now, we're going to do, you're going to be part of those that will do it again for those that will come for the first time when you come back again. So if this is your first time of coming to Spirit Temple Bible Church, we'd like to tell you that you are, you are welcome. I say you are welcome. I say you are welcome. We are so glad that you came. We are so glad you came. We have been praying so hard for God to bring you. Because we know we need you in this church. Amen. And I'm not kidding. If I was kidding, I would have told you. We need people like you, 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 and you, and you. We need you all. Because God has a special plan for you, for him to bring you here today. This is not by accident. I believe, I just heard the Spirit of God tell me to say this to you, that your story is about to change. Yes, that your story is about to change. There is something unique that God is doing in this house. There is something unique in the, I know that for a fact in my personal life, there's something is doing in this house. But as we step in and be, in, be a part of this great work, something begins to happen in our own lives. Amen? Because uh, so God is doing something here. So be a part of it. Join us. We're really glad that you came. So if this is your first time coming to Spirit Temple Bible Church, I'd like you to remain seated. And I'd like everyone on Sunday. On Sunday. If this is your first time coming on Sunday, to, because some people come on during the week. Coming to church on Sunday, please, I'd like you to sit down. Everyone else, please rise up as we honor them. We are so glad you came. We are so glad. We are so glad. Hallelujah. We are so glad. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. Come on. Keep clapping. Let them know we are happy. Let them know we are happy to see them. My goodness. That is beautiful, lovely faces. Wow. We are so 
My goodness, all, all over there and all over there and all over there. We are so glad. We are so glad. We are so glad. We are so glad that you came. Just keep on clapping. Don't be tired. All right, all right, all right. As you remain standing, still honoring them, we would like the ushers to please uh, pass very quickly uh, the, uh, the visitor's card so they can fill it out. The ushers will give you the visitor's card very quickly so you can just fill out your information. Uh, you have some back there. You have just please do that very quickly, speedily. And, uh, and please, you will drop it in the offering basket when it passes by during the time of offering. And as Brother Eddie gets the song ready for the theme song, so as what we normally do in Spirit Temple Bible Church is we want to welcome you specially. But this time you are going to stand up. I want to hug you. We are a hugging church. We are a loving church. Believe me, our body don't itch. You would enjoy the hug. It's always warm. It's always warm and always wonderful. Amen. So we are going to sing a song. As everyone please rise, let's make sure we, we greet one another. Please keep playing that song. Playing that song that we need each other to survive. Let us please rise and walk around.
Amen. We need you all to survive. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in your beautiful seat. Amen. Amen. Beside your be beautiful brother and sister. Amen. Amen. God is girl. We need each other to survive. Amen. 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 All right. We have a lot to accomplish today, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I know some people are outside. Um, let me see what we're going to do. Now, for those that came for the first time, I'm going to be praying for you at the end of the service. Usually, I do it at the stage, but I'll wait until the end of the service. Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> every last Friday of the month, we have our healing and miracle service. Amen? Yeah. And that is next Friday. Where God moves in a mighty way, yes, heals and delivers and set free. So we're going to pass this out to you very quickly to make sure you don't miss next Friday. We bless your name today. We give you the praise. And Lord, I pray that tonight you will speak to every heart, you will speak to everyone, oh God, that Lord, everyone that hears the sound of my voice, would be impacted by your Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. So Lord, we thank you and we bless you tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in your beautiful seat. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. So please bear with me for the next uh, segment of this service as I bring a word from God Almighty. I have a word for you. I have a word from God for you. I believe that this is the moment, this is the hour where God is going to turn your life around. This is the time and hour where God is going to put you in a place that he has destined for you. I believe that we are now a place where God is going to take you to your place of destiny. I believe that we are now in a season where God is going to launch you into your next level. Everyone say next level. We spoke yesterday about grace for next level. We talked about grace for the next level. We realized that God has destined us to move from one level to the next. It is not the purpose or the plan of God for you to remain in the same place. God has not destined you to be where you have always been all these years. I believe just like what God told, him, told the Israelites, God told them, you have wandered long enough in this mountain. You have gone round and round and round and round enough. Many of us in this house tonight, we have been in the same place, round and round and round. The same situation, the same circumstances, the names might have changed, but it's the same thing. You're going through the same thing. One week, it is called depression. The next time, you call it lack. And the next time again you call it sickness no matter what you call it it's like you're always going in a circle but tonight I believe that God has sent me here to prophetically declare to you tonight that your season of breakthrough has come that tonight is your night of breakthrough that tonight is your night of increase that tonight is your night of next level everyone shout next level I believe that, that the time where the enemy had you in his hand is over. I believe that you are now ready to step into your next level. I believe that now you are ready to move into your next phase. I believe that now you are ready to move into the next assignment that God has for you. I believe that now you are ready to move into the next living dimension in your life. I believe that now you are ready to move into the next phase of divine health in your life. I believe that now ready to step into the next phase of prosperity in your life. I believe that now you are about to step into the next level. Everyone shout next level. 
And next level might mean different things for many of us. I don't know what your next level might be. I don't know what it is that you want to happen to you next. But I know for a fact what I believe God for for the next level. I know for a fact where I want to be in the next level. I don't know where you want to be. I may not know exactly where you anticipate to be but I want to tell you tonight as long as you are under the sound of my voice uh, that whether you like it or not uh, by the faith of God in my life you are going to move to the next level you are going to move to the next level you are going to move to the next level somebody shout yes next level the Bible says that Jesus Christ compelled his disciples, let us go to the other side. He forced them. So tonight, I'm going to force things to happen in your destiny. Tonight, whether you like it or not, I'm going to declare that the goodness of God will rise upon your life. Whether you like it or not, as a set man of God in this house, I'm going to declare that the grace of God will launch you to your place of destiny. Everyone shout next level. Next level, 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 grace for 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 next level. We 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 talked about yesterday. That, the, that God is the God of all grace. Everyone say all grace. All grace. Say it again. All say it again. All and we also learned last, last night that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of grace. That the Holy Ghost is the spirit of grace and God is the God of all grace. That tells me that whatever area you need grace in your life, God is the God of that next grace. If you need favor in your job, God is the God of that grace. If you need favor in your health, God is the God of that grace. If you need favor in your family, God is the God of that grace. If you need favor in your business, God is the God of that grace. No matter what favor you need, no matter what you need in your life, I want to declare to you this morning that God is the God of that grace that you need. God is the God of that grace. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of grace. And as we beckon on him today, I believe his grace already has been released upon upon you and tonight uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to appropriate that grace to manifest in your life somebody say appropriate, appropriate. because the Bible says that the grace of God is a free gift but I realize that when somebody gives you a gift you have the choice to receive the gift or not to receive the gift but you understand also that there is only one way you can receive something from God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it said, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Because when you love God with all of your heart, I am here to declare to you that the God of all grace will allow the grace of his, of, of, of your destiny to begin to shine in your life. That the God of all grace will release the grace you need for in every area of your life. Somebody shout grace. grace. If grace is free and it must be received, if God has shared his grace upon you, how come many Christians are not living in favor? How come many Christians go to church day in and day out and shout hallelujah and yet their life is showing the lack of grace manifesting in their life? Tonight is your night. I say tonight is your night. I say tonight is your night. Because God does not want you so just say, I have the favor of God without manifestation of that favor. Let me show you something very unique. In the book of Romans chapter 4, 
If you have the, if you have amplified, you will get it very clear. Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four, verse sixteen. If you are there, let me hear an amen. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order it might be given as an act of grace or merited favor to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all its descendants, not only to devotees, and adherence of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Right here we see God has given you his grace, his favor. But to receive that favor, for that favor to manifest in your life, depends entirely. It was entirely. Say it again. Inside. One more time. Inside. On faith. On faith. The difference between these two Christians, one of them experiencing God's favor, and the other one not experiencing God's favor is because of the lack of faith. Because God said it's going to depend entirely on your belief so that nobody can brag that because of what they've done, that's why they have not gotten favor. Everyone shout favor. favor. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the raw material of what you need to build the house that you want to build. Faith is the raw material of what you need for the favor to manifest in your life. Faith is the raw material. Faith is the substance. Faith is the drywall that you need to build a house. Faith is the, is the nail that you need to put the drywall together. He said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, the title deed of the things you have not yet seen. If you really want to experience the favor of God in your life, you must appropriate it by what? Faith. It is going to take faith to receive anything from God. God has given you his favor. Everyone say with me, I am favored. I am favored. Say it again. I am favored. Say with me, the grace of God, God. resides in me. The spirit of grace lives in me. The God of all grace is my Father. Now, having understood that, you must realize that the manifestation of grace in your life will not happen without faith. And that is a problem of many Christians. They go to church. They believe, but they have no faith. Now, there's a difference. You can believe and there is no faith. Believing is just having an agreement that what you heard is true. But faith is acting on what you believe that, that what you heard is true. Yeah. When you act on that word of God, now faith comes alive in your spirit. When the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God, I begin to realize also that just as the Holy Ghost is the, is, is, is the spirit of grace, Faith also is a spirit. Everyone say, faith is a spirit. So faith itself is a spirit. Faith is a spirit. But let me show you something very unique also. Let me show you something in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Turn your Bibles. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 9, and we're going to read verse 8. Nine verse 8. It says, And God is able to make all grace, that is every favor and earthly blessing, come to you in abundance, 
so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever they need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance to every good and charitable donation so right here you see that god is able everyone say god is able you see we serve an able god is able to make how many grace how many grace see last time i checked all really meant all so it doesn't matter what area in your life you need the favor of god for all means what all to make all grace abound abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things now how do you appropriate this grace i just told you by faith everyone say by faith, by faith. because without faith you cannot appropriate the favor of god to manifest in your life so in a few minutes as i will start praying for some of you all of you you got to have faith in your in your god you have to have faith in god in the word of god and also have faith in the man of god that god has placed in your life now as i declare and make my goodness i feel his anointing right now i feel his anointing right now i feel his healing virtue flowing even through my left arm hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you for your for your presence in this house thank you 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 lord thank you for your presence thank you thank you for your presence everyone lift up your hands and begin to worship him begin to worship him begin to worship him begin to worship him Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. So the favor of God brings you healing when you receive it, appropriated by faith. Even right now, the Lord is telling me, you're going to be healing two conditions. If as I'm speaking right now, your ankle and your mid-back. Your ankle and your mid-back. The middle of your back and your ankle. Because God is, is taught in that right now. You might be feeling some warm sensation around your ankle and if your back was hurting, you begin to feel some heat in that area. If you are that person and want to quickly lay hands on you, rush to the front very quickly. If you have, if you had pain in your back around this area and also in your ankle and you want God to fix it, Hurry up quickly. Let me lay hands on you because the power of God is moving right now as I obey the voice of God. The voice of God right now. I pray, Lord God, for this daughter of yours. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and begin to pray that God should touch that ankle or that back. Begin to pray that God will touch that ankle and that back. Lift up those hands and begin to pray that God will touch that ankle and that back. Come this way. Come this way. That God will touch the ankle and and the back. So Lord God, I pray for these three ladies here, oh God. You know exactly whatever is going on in the ankle or in their back. And I pray that God for your divine touch and divine healing to flow in their life. I pray that God would just touch them even right now by your spirit. Oh Lord, I pray that right now, God, that she will receive your touch, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. That whatever, oh God, wrong in this body, whether it's a back or whether it's an ankle, I decree that pain to live now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for this one also, God. Whatever the condition is, oh God, oh Father God, I pray, oh God, that you will move in our life.
life for God. I pray, Father God, for your complete touch, your complete healing, Father God, to go through her right now, the healing virtue of God, to move in her life right now. I decree every pain, every sickness in this body be gone completely in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for this child of yours. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, Lord, whatever might be wrong in the body, whether it's the ankle or our knees or our back, I decree, oh God, every pain be gone in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you want God to really appropriate faith in your life, uh, you got to trust him. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? You trust God. So Lord God, I pray your daughter trust you, Lord. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, that Lord, you will move on her behalf of God. That God, you will touch her. That God, you will heal her. Whether it's her back, whether it's her ankle, I speak divine touch of God upon her life right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Give a clap to the Lord. So the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we see that the favor of God has been released upon your life. It is a purpose and the plan of God that all grace will abound towards you. Everyone say all grace. All grace. Say all grace. All grace. All grace. All grace. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. The Bible says, Yet we have the same of faith. As he had written, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. That means that for favor to begin to manifest in your life, you got to speak it with, from, with your mouth. Say with me, I am a speaking spirit. I'm a speaking spirit. Say it again. I'm a spirit. Say it like you believe what you just said. Yes, yes, yes. Because if God has given you his favor, if you have his favor, you got to speak it out with your mouth. It is time you got to declare what God declares about you. It is time you got to say what God says about you. It is time you got to speak what God speaks about you. It is time to stop talking all the things the devil puts in your mind. It is time to only say what God says about you. Say, I am blessed. I am, blessed. I am favored. I am going to the next level. I am going to the next level. I have grace for the next level. I have the anointing for the next level. So the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 16. For out of his fullness we have all received. Hmm. Out of his fullness, we have all received. We have all received and had a share and we all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings, even favor upon favor and gift upon gift. Say with me, I have received. <laughs> you see, life revolves around belief. The Bible says, as a man believes in his heart, so it is. The Bible says that you have the fullness of his grace has been received by you. You have been given. And the Bible says it's from one level of grace to another level of grace. From one favor to the next favor. From one blessing to the next blessing. From one favor to the next favor. From one prosperity to the next prosperity. From one increase to the next increase. Somebody shout favor. You have received it. For some of you, I prayed for you last night. 
to really receive or to activate, basically is to activate the spirit of grace that resided in your life. Because the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that is the Spirit of grace, reside in your life, reside on the inside of you, resides in you. And the Bible says that that Spirit of grace that resides in you has to be activated by faith for it to manifest in your life. Because you cannot experience anything that God supplies us without faith. Even your healing. Now, how many of us here are Christians? If you are a born again child of God, lift up your hand. If you are born again, let me hear you say amen. amen. Now, let me tell you in news in case you don't understand it. God heals. God moves in our lives. Yes. See, God can perform miracles and healings Amen. without faith for the unbeliever. But for the Christian, I'm sorry to say, God requires you to apply your faith. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. The next time before you pray for a miracle, you better know that God is looking for faith. He needs your faith to move. It is the unbeliever that comes here out of nowhere. God does it for them. Just like that. Without faith. But for you as a Christian, you need to develop your faith. That's why the Bible says that you should not forget the assemblies of these people together. Because why? Because your increase of faith comes by what? Hearing. Say faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So and it's only through faith that you can receive from God. Nothing you see right now that happened by happenstance. Everything you see right now is by faith. This pulpit is by faith. This decoration is by faith. Even you is by faith. Everyone shout favor. It's by faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is by faith. There is no way you can get anything from God without faith. You got to believe God. You got to trust God without any shadow of doubt. Believe him. Even if you die believing, let it be said on your, on your, on your top stone that he believed God with his heart, never saw the promise and died. Instead of writing, he did not believe God and died. Believe God with everything you got in you. If God comes through for you, praise God. If he doesn't come through for you, I'll still believe him. That is a kind of mindset that you should have as a child of God. You believe God regardless. You believe God no matter what. When I, when God changed my plans, my plan to come here and duplicate, duplicate what I did so well in your Pennsylvania as a business man with all properties and with all businesses and multiple businesses and doing so well in fact if you go to that town and just mention my name almost everyone in that place would know that name as a duke many of them used to think i'm probably one old man somewhere because they thought this man's name is everywhere but the reason that god brought me here trying to do duplicate the same thing but god said no 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 you cannot do that i have a different assignment for you. I have a different purpose for you. And you know what I have to do? I got to believe God. Everybody say believe God. Believe so what you see beside you is a belief in God. Trust in God. Say what well, God, you know what? If you tell me to lift this thing, I'm going to leave it. If you tell me to do your work, I'm going to do it. I got to step out in faith. Everybody say faith. And somebody asked me, how are you going to manage to take care of the family? I said, don't you worry about that. If God tells me to do his work, I'm going to do his work. I don't have to worry about any of that. Because the Lord shall provide. Because God shall provide. Because God shall provide. Because God shall provide. And God has provided. It is all as a result of faith in the favor. Everyone shout faith. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible. So you now 
have to believe. What is faith? Faith is believing even when you have not seen it. Acting like a mad man. That means that you just believe it. People think you've lost your mind. You just believe it. You just believe it that you know what it is done. God has done it. Faith, contrary to what you must have been taught in the past, faith is not in the present. Faith is not in the now. Faith is not even in your future. Faith is in the past. Everyone say faith is in the past. Very important you get that because the Bible says it is, many of you, many of the preachers have taught you Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. He said, Now faith is. So you just think it says faith is now. It never said faith is now. He said, Now let me tell you what faith is. Now we don't get that. Now faith is. Somebody says it means faith is now. He didn't say that. He said, now, is it Paul was, has been having a discourse with them in chapter 10 of Hebrew. He told them a lot of stuff. Hebrews chapter 10. He said, now, let me tell you what faith is. He did not say faith is now. Faith is past tense. Faith is based on what God has done for you in the past and you believe it in the now so you can pull it in into your presence. That means that God is not going to do it. God has already what? Done it. Everybody say, I am blessed. I am, blessed. I am favored. I, am I have the grace of God. That means you are not going to get the grace of God. You are not going to be favored. You are already blessed. You are already favored. You are already anointed. You are already in your path of progression in your life. Everyone say favor. So the Bible did not say faith is now. It said, now let me tell you what faith is. Did you get that? I know you've been taught for many years. Many preachers have made you to think faith is now. So no, no, no. No, it is believing on what God has already what done. It is believing in what God has done in the past. It's not believing that God is going to do it now or what God has done now, but that what God has done in the past. So what you do as a child of God is to stand in a position, I believe he has done it and I want it now. I believe he has done it and I want it well now. Now that changes your prayer. That changes your focus. You are no more begging. You say, you know what? I believe your word. I believe your word. I, am, I want it to manifest now. Not going to do it for me. You have already done it. You've already blessed me. You have already favored me. But I want to experience it now. Everyone shout now. Yes, 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 now. I mean now, 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 now. Everyone say now. Everyone say now. Everyone say now. Everyone say now. Yes, your blessing, you can experience it now. Why? Because it has been done in the past. Everyone say now. No more will you be looking into the future for God to do something for you. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ said on the cross when he was nailed, he said very clearly, it is finished. Everything that you need has been given to you. Everything you are praying for, you already got it. Everything you want in your life, you already got it. The favor, you already got it. The new job, you already got it. The prosperity, you already got it. Everyone say, I got it. And I want it now. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Now you are talking back to me. Because when you don't believe that, you have not yet begun to apply the biblical faith. The biblical faith says, I already got it. So because I got it, I want to pull it in now. Yes. Because then you are acting based on what you have already received. Yes. It is a different mindset. When you believe you've got something, there is a level of tenacity in your spirit. Yes. You are no more working like a wimp. 
you are no more working like a beggar because you know you've already gotten it and somebody is trying to hold back what you already gotten you tell that devil get out of the way and take him back what the devil stole from me I'm taking back my health. I'm taking back my money. I'm taking back my mind. I'm taking back my marriage. I'm taking back my children. I'm taking back my first love. I'm taking back everything. I'm taking it back. Yes, yes, yes. You got to take it back because God has already given it to you. That's why the Bible says in John 10, 10, for the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. To steal what? To steal what you already got. He cannot steal what is in the future. Are, are you getting me, people? He cannot steal what you don't have. He is stealing what you already got, so you cannot experience it. When you believe that, it changes everything about you. When you step as in the name of Jesus, that job is mine. Peace is mine. Healing is mine. I'm not going to allow you to steal my joy anymore. I refuse to be depressed. Because you believe you already got it. Everyone say, I got it. And I want it now. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we're going to close with that thought. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. He said, therefore, let us come boldly. Mm. Come what? Boldly. Everyone say boldly. boldly. See, boldly, the last time I checked, really means boldly. Not wimply. You can only come boldly when you know you've gotten something. He said, let me tell you something. Oh my gosh, you're not, you're not hearing me on this side. When you know somebody got your car key, you don't be telling them, please, can you please give? give. Exactly. It's your car key. When you know somebody got your prosperity, you don't be telling them, could you please just give me back my house? Your house, your house. I don't know if you, I don't know if you in this place have an apartment. I don't know if you have a key to the apartment. I don't know if you have a house. I don't know if you have a key to your house. When you go home and suddenly somebody stands at the door of your house and will you tell them, please, can you please let me enter my house? Get, get out! Let me get in. It is your house. You've got the key. You know, oh please, can you please just let me enter my house? No. The Bible says, let us come on boldly. So we are, so the throne of what? Grace. That means God, the God of grace has a throne of grace. The God you serve is a God of all grace. Where it sits on is called grace. Where it makes decision is called what? Grace. Where he lives on is called grace. The place he sits when he's been worshipped is called what? Grace. And the Bible says, let us come boldly into the throne of what? And to come boldly will require some faith. Faith is bold. You may not be bold in your face, but you should be bold in your heart. It is not about having a wicked look. It's having a strong spirit that you believe and you believe and you believe and you believe and you believe, and you believe that you got it. Let us come boldly into the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find favor to help in time of what need. You already got it. You just have to step in and get what already has been given to you. The grace you need for the next level is waiting for the taking. Mm. 
die for somebody. The grace you need for the next level is waiting for the taking. Yes, it's just waiting for you to sign for the delivery. Because if the, if the post office drops a delivery card in your door, if you don't go pick it up, it remains in the post office until you go sign for it and pick up your package. So your package is waiting for you right in the throne of grace. All you have to do this morning is to step in boldly and obtain faith, grace. Everyone shout grace. grace. Say, say, I got grace for the next level. I got grace for the next level. Oh yes, 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 yes. So you receive it by what? Faith. By what? Faith. By what? Faith. Hang with me. Hang with me in this church. If this is your first time, stay tight. Just hang in. Don't you miss out. Give me three months of your life. And I'm not kidding with this. Everyone say three months. Everyone say anointing. anointing. In my life. Has increased. Even those, even when I was operating under a different level of anointing, below this anointing, those that came from York, like the sister there, and this one there, and the other one there, they know that give me three months of your time, their life can be transformed because of the word of God that proceed out of this mouth. But now I'm functioning under a different level of anointing. And I'm telling you, give me three months of your life. Come to church on Sunday. If you can make Wednesday, make it on Wednesday. Open your heart and see how God, how the God I serve, the God of heaven, the God of heaven, the God whose I am, the God who have called me, to this, you will transform and change your life that when people see you, they'll be wondering what in the world happened to you. Yeah. Nothing but the grace of God Amen. upon this house of God. Because every house has different grace. Every house has different grace. I will say it again. Every house has different grace. Every church has different grace. There is a special grace in this house that can take you to the next level and maintain you in the next level as you progress it to the next level. Starting with your spirit mind and gradually from the spirit man begin to manifest in the outside of your life. Give a clap to Jesus. So as a child of God, you have received his grace. You receive it by faith. And the God of grace will give you manifestation. So tonight, everyone say tonight. And that's because your morning is coming. I say tonight because your morning is coming. Tonight. I want to agree with you. I want to put my faith with your faith. Whatever that you believe God. And I'm saying this under the, the anointing of God on my life. But I'm not in here for a play. I tell someone, I have a lot of things I can do. But when God tells me, leave the other stuff you can do and come here to do what I can do through you, I'm not playing. If you want me to agree with you by faith, put my faith with your faith. To pull in the manifestation of that thing in your next level. 
that you want to see manifest in your life. I want you to stand up and lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. It's almost all of you, so I'm not going to call people to the front because that will fade this place up. Because where you are, lift up your hands and begin to pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. <clears throat> and if what you need, because if this is for those who really need something special, who have a special next level, if your next level is very special, and you know it's something special and unique, and you want the hand of the man of God laid on you. Come to the front and just line up like this. If it's very special. Just line up behind this wall. Good. That's good. Very special. Change of situation. Come, come, that's come, sister to come. I gotta pray for you. That situation must change. Yes. Change of situation. Stand right there. Change of situation. Change of situation. Let a wave of the Holy Spirit blow across this place right now. It's one year anniversary. Oh Yamana Yeleketasa. Reko Pasiko Tashanda Yamana. Let the wave of the Holy Ghost. The wave of the Holy Ghost flow. Do what only you alone can do, Holy Spirit of God. Do what only you alone can do, Holy Spirit of God. Let their life change. Let their story 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 change. Lift up your hands. Surrender to God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Change. Father, in the name of Jesus. Change. Next level anointing. Rest upon your son. Receive. 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 In the name of Jesus. Receive. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, here comes the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Holy Spirit, thank you for moving on this life. Thank you for touching. Thank you, Father God, for things turning around in his life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Complete change in the circumstance. Complete change in that situation. I declare complete change. Now in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive that miracle. That change taking place in your life. In the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. I agree with you right now. Oh, Reke Shikota Yamana Sele. Rake de Reke Si. Rakota Shiketa Yamana. Rikota Shanda Yepe. Reko da Tesi. Reke da Yama. Riko Paka Sende Leleki Sanda. Rakode Kashake Yemeneki Salo. Onda 
rake de kela rikoda ya meke shando ikembere rerere rako de kasi rikenda de kandare rikoda te shi reke rake de de ki samba da ya o kanda ye meneli konda rekenda kase rike shiko receive in the name of jesus receive in the name of jesus breakthroughs 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 financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus financial breakthroughs receive 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 in the name of jesus 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 oh the holy spirit move upon this life in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon this heart, rest upon this woman. Do only what you alone can do. Complete change as moving to the next level. A decree done in the name of Jesus. Break every obstacle. And I pray the Lord, a miracle will take place in her life. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, pray for this son of God. In the name of Jesus. Next level anointing. Rest on you. Receive. In the name of Jesus. Next level. 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 In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God begins to move on this life right now. In the name of Jesus, and everything that has been holding you, every rock. Anyone here with, with, with something in their stomach, like something wrong internal, is that you? Who else again? Something in their internal organ, who else? That's you, that's you, that's you. That's you. You Lift up your hands here. Lord, I pray, Father God, for that thing, whatever is, it, it is, oh God, whatever it is, oh God, I pray, Father God, today, anniversary of God, Oh God, I pray that Lord, you would, Holy Spirit, that you would do only what you alone can do for this daughter of yours, oh God. Right now, I pray, Father God, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will remove every situation that needs to be gone. I pray that in the name of Jesus, put your hand on your stomach, just one hand, and lift one hand up. I pray that Father God, hey, yes, Holy Spirit, touch, heal, Remove the pain, remove the circumstance, fix every organ in this abdomen in the name of Jesus. And when she goes to the doctor, Lord, they will give a good report that everything now is normal in the name of Jesus. I decree to be so in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray for this. Oh, oh, Keta. I pray that Lord, you will just do it for her also, God. In the name of Jesus. I cancel every device of the enemy. I cancel, Lord. Oh, Rake Shiko Tanda Manaye Kesa. Rako de Kesa Kado. Hey, Lord, I pray that God in the name of Jesus. You yes. will do it, oh God, at the anointing of the Holy Ghost to God. We flow through our God and resolve every situation in this body. In the name of Jesus, especially in the abdomen, Lord, that God will fix it. You will fix it by your spirit. It's done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit. Move upon our life. I receive the grace for the next level. Right now. Right now. Touch. Touch in the name. Maybe get the name of Jesus. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Thank you. Oh, Father God, touch this young man. Transformation in his life. Hey, Rekio Pasaya, Kapote Shikindalamona. Thank you, Father God. Every assignment of the devil in his life, I cancel it. 
now. And Lord, let your favor manifest in his life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Lift up your hands, sister. I know God is moving on you. Yes, I see him or I see his hand on your life. Lord, I pray that God you just touch. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes. Spirit of the Most High God. Move on this woman. Change things that are in her life. I declare the Holy Spirit of God. We turn your life around. Lord, touch her. Move on her. Even right now. Now, receive. Receive. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this one also, God. Oh, Lord, she surrendered to you, oh God, everything. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Look at the power of God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus. 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 Oh, my goodness. Mm. Mm. Pick this woman up again. This woman. Pick her up again. Pick her up. Pick this woman up. There's something. Yes, pick her up. Help her. Just, yeah, pick her up. Complete overhauling in life. Yes, Jesus. 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 Complete change. Complete. 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 Everything about her. From the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Change. Next level. You can let her go. Let her go. She receive the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this son of yours, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Most High God. Next level anointing. Oh, to rest upon him. Next level. Oh. Oh, say ye, meneki salala. Oh my goodness, yes, 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 yes. I feel him. I sense him coming upon you right now, Holy Spirit. Thank you, for, oh my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for moving in His life. I pray, Father God, for a complete overhaul in His situation, Lord. Complete overhaul in His life, for oh God. Complete, complete. I pray to be so right now. Now receive, receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. Just receive in the name. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for touching him, oh God. For touching him, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for his, his heart that is all perfect, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for his legs, oh God. Thank you for the strength. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the strength of God. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, God. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, because his heart is right. Thank you, Lord, because strength has returned back to his legs. Thank you, Father, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, O oh God, in the name of yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, God, in the name of Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Look at me. What do you want God to do for you right now? Quick, what do you want God to do for you right now? Okay. Okay. So is he here for your daughter? Is that good health for your daughter? Oh, it's for you. He's praying for you. It is for him also. <coughs> Amen. Strength. Hallelujah. Father, we pray, Father God, for the daughter of God. That Lord God, good health for the daughter. 
as even as that's his biggest request right now, I pray that Lord God, you would completely do that mighty work in her life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Father Lord God. Let complete overhaul, complete, 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 oh God. Every in his body, I thank you, Lord, for the strength in his internal strength, oh Lord. Internal healing, oh God. I thank you, Father, for doing it for him in the name of Jesus. Give me the oil very quickly on my hand. Give me the oil on my hand. Very quickly, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that Father God, this anointing, Father God, which I held this night to God, I pray that Lord God, your strength would return to Him completely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give a clap of to Jesus, hallelujah. Did I pray for you yet? Not yet? Hallelujah. What do you want God to do for you? Okay. Amen. It's going away right now. Lift your hands up. The blood of Jesus comes against your spirit of fear. Lord, you said, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that the blood of Jesus is against that spirit. The blood of Jesus is against that spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that God, that the spirit of fear be released from her. And I pray that, Father, you would infuse in her, God, the spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost will rest upon her. Lord, I pray that even right now, God, she will have sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind is a portion of God. In the name of Jesus, every fear is banished away. is lifted away from her. And now she receives sound mind. Sound mind. Peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give it love to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for... Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, God, for this young man. God, I pray that, Lord, you will begin to... Oh, my goodness, Jesus, touch him, oh God. Touch him, Father God. Touch him, Lord. Move in his life, oh God. Even this young man, move in his life, oh God, in the mighty way. Heal him, Father God. Whatever, Father God, is, is wrong in his body, Lord. Heal him, Father God. Touch him, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. One more, one more, one more. What did he pray for? Where is it? Okay. I curse the spirit of cancer. 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 Leave this man. Take your hand off his life. Let healing. Flow to him. The healing for you flow. Flow, 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 flow. Remove every cancerous cells and complete healing. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father, for doing it. Sister Paula, Sister Paula. Yes, Sister Paula, Sister Paula. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Oh, Holy Spirit of Most High God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Touch your daughter, Lord God. Change things around. Oh, Lord, I pray for strength, both physical and internal. I pray for strength. I pray for strength. I pray for you infuse her with the strength of the Holy Ghost. I pray that, God, you will do mighty things in this life, for oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, Lord, for, oh, oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Rake Seke Dayamana. Rico Tasa Canada Maneke Sekele. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the strength. Thank you, Father God, for the new 
Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you for the new provision, oh God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you for what you've done in our life. Thank you. We receive it, Lord, by faith. We pull it in right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Holy Spirit of God, I pray, Father God, for your son, O oh God. Lord God, I pour my heart to you this morning, Father Lord God. Father, I pray for, oh wow. You know, they say, oh God, that your blood speak better things. I pray, the Lord, that your blood, the blood of Christ, will speak better things for him. That God, even as we wait for this response from that hospital, Lord. Father God, I pray for a good report, good response, O oh God. Father God, regarding that, 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 that position, I declare that, Father, it be so. I pray, Father God, for family strength, O oh God. Oh, Lord, my God, I pray that, Lord, you will receive. Oh, rakete ke sata yamane ye ke sata la la. Riko patasha. Riko pande ke siko tanda yamana. Rekeda kande ke siko ndala poya. Rekeda sanda da mana ke se. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you, oh, Father God, I thank you, oh Lord God. Oh Rake de Deke Shi Kenda da 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 manakasanda. Oh Kandara Manakasa Kondodoro Shi Kende Kondara Manakasi Kete de Reke Tasaka. Oh Rake Tede Kata. Oh Jesus Move in a situation in a life of God change things that needs to be changed. I pray, Father God, for a complete touch in our life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name, O oh God. We praise you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for the great work you do in our life, O oh God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for the touch. Thank you for the provision. Thank you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Are you blessed already? Amen, amen, amen. We have to close now, but I need to uh, please stand up, my sister. Many of you know this is my sister, right? She's my little mommy. This is my big mommy. That is my little mommy. But she's going back to Nigeria on Wednesday. We are going to miss her. Yes. I wish she would stay with us, but she said, I got to go back to my husband. <laughs> she missed her husband. <laughs> Bring him with you next time when you come. Were you blessed with her ministry? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, she has been a blessing to my life personally. And um, without her, I would not be where I am today as a Christian. Yes, uh, so God has used her tremendously in my life. But tonight, we're going to pray for her as, we, as she goes back home to Nigeria. And I pray, she, I know she will come back again. <laughs> she likes to come in the summer when she's on holidays. So I'm sure she will come back again to spend the holidays with us. So please stretch your hands to her. You, when are you going back? Don't, oh my, tonight, you come, let us pray for you too. She's going back to Tobago tonight. Come, but let's pray for special ones towards her. Amen. Let, let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Father God, I pray, Father Lord, for, for your daughters, oh God. I pray, Father Lord, for both of them as she's going back to Tobago and she's going back to Nigeria. Lord, I pray that your blessing would rest upon them, oh God. I pray that God, oh Father God, that their life, oh God, would never be the same again, oh God. I pray that, Lord God, you will bless them. I pray that, God, you will protect them. I pray that, God, you will provide for them. I pray that, God, you will experience journey mercies. I pray that, Father, Lord God, you will take them beyond where they have been before. I pray that, God, the next level will begin to manifest in their life, even beginning from now. Thank you, Father, for your goodness towards, towards them. Bless your name, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Let us rise as we close. Am I, are we? There have been so many surprises so far. I don't even know if they have any surprise again.
Is that a surprise? Oh, all right. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. It was just laid on, on the heart of the saints here at Spirit Temple that we take up a love offering for Sister Monica, who has labored in the field, who have ministered to us before she goes back to Nigeria. Amen? Amen. That we would take up a love offering. So if our ushers could simply just grab one of the baskets very quickly, very quickly she has labored here in this part of the vineyard so again the bible says a workman is worthy of his hire amen amen so just give as the lord leads you to give amen this is for sister monica before she goes back to nigeria journeys back amen amen Saints, we can simply come up. If you have something to give, please just come forward at this time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. It was a long service today. I know. Anniversary service. Uh, a glorious service. Amen, amen. Those that are here for the very first time, we have some food with for you. I would like to sit with you and have lunch. Is it lunch or breakfast? Lunch. Okay, I want to make sure. So please prepare a table so I can sit with the first time people, please. A table I can sit with them. There are about one, two, three, four, about eight of them. I would like to sit with them and eat with them. Amen? Amen. God bless. Thank you, Lord, for this offering. Everyone who has given, we pray that Lord, you would bless every giver in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Was me? Stretch off your, stretch out your hand as we, as we dismiss. This is my week that I will give unto the Lord. My life belongs to God. My life is led by the Spirit. This week, as I go about my assignment, I decree that favor would attend my way. I decree everywhere I go, I carry the favor of God. I decree everywhere I go, I carry the anointing of God. This week, I will be in divine health. This week, I will operate with sound mind. This week, I will be in the house of God. Thank you, Lord. Because this week, evil shall bow before my gate. Evil shall not come near my family's dwelling. I decree it to be so. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. You are blessed. God bless you. Clap your hands together for the Lord. And we'll see you again on Wednesday Bible studies. And for the first time comers, I would like to have lunch with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.